Welcome to Pastor's Chat today. Well, every church has them. Every church has those people that simply come because they're curious as to what's going on. And then there's another group that comes because it's convenient for them to come, but goodness, if it's raining too hard, snowing too hard, or too hot outside or something, they don't come because it's not convenient. They don't serve because it's not convenient for them to serve. And then you got another group of people at church who serve and love the Lord and come to church because they're convicted that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that the world needs the message that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. Every church has a group like one of these. Now, I believe as we look at the church of Pergamos here in chapter 2, verses 12 through 17, we're going to see that this is the compromising church. Now, remember, the church at Ephesus was a wonderful church, but it had left its first love. And so the Lord had somewhat against it. And then the church at Sardis, uh, uh, at Smyrna, there was nothing uh, negative that the Lord would say to that church because it was the persecuted church. It was the crowned church and it received the crown of life because persecution made the church pure, made the people stand up for what they believed in. But now you have the church at Pergamos. Now, I believe these are very real churches. I've been told that Pergamos was called the greatest city in Asia Minor. And probably the first temple that was dedicated to Caesar was there. And uh, it was a rabid promoter of the imperial cult. And that's why it was called Satan's Seat. And so he says, and to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, and by the way, remember the angel is the messenger. Who is the messenger of the church of Pergamos? That's probably the pastor. So to the leaders, the pastors, the elders of the church, he's given this letter because they're the ones that need to do something about what is needed in that church. And so to the angel of the church of Pergamos write, These things says he who has the sharp two-edged sword. Now remember, every letter gives a description of the Lord that goes back to chapter 1. And here, this church needs to hear that maybe just like Rome, the emperor has a sharp sword. The Lord Jesus Christ has a sharp two-edged sword. You should fear the pain of the Lord's sword more than you fear the pain of Caesar's sword, I believe what he, is what he's going to say to this church here. We're going to find that this church was the compromising church. He says first, and as he gives them words of approval, I know your works, where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and how you hold fast to my name. And you did not deny my faith, even in the days in which Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was killed among you where Satan dwells. And so he had something good to say about this church, because there was a group of convicted followers of Jesus Christ, even to the point where Antipas was willing to die for his faith, rather than drop incense there at the altar of Caesar, at the temple there dedicated to Caesar. This man says, no, I will die first. And he did. He felt the sword of Caesar because of his faith, and he held to his faith. Oh, goodness, would to God we had more convicted followers of Jesus, more convicted followers of Jesus. Remember back in John chapter 6, we read about those people that uh, followed Jesus simply because they're curious. They saw the miracles that he did and they followed him. Then there were those that they followed him because they were fed uh, some loaves and some fishes and they were looking for more handouts. And then there was that group in chapter 6, Jesus said to Peter and the disciples, well, who do you think I am? And Peter says, well, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. They believed that Jesus was the one that had the bread of life. And so, and we're going to see that at the end of this, this, uh, this uh, essay or this letter to the church of Pergamos. And so there were some that were convicted followers of Jesus Christ. But there were some, and we're going to see it tomorrow, I have some things against you because there are those who hold the doctrine of Balaam. And so today, let, let's determine not to be a convenient follower or just a curious follower of Jesus, but let's determine by the grace of God to be willing to take a stand for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, wherever we're at without compromise. 
God bless you, and you have a wonderful, wonderful day.